What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with a build that I don't think we could have possibly done until this point in time and that is to make a sky base which is on the ground. One of the common comments we get all the time on the channel is to make a sky base and not so much anymore but back when we were doing a lot of hover city stuff and uh, and various other you know persistent base building things we it always came up to build a sky base and the one problem I had with the sky base well a few problems one is of course you have to use a lot of thrusters and the more thrusters you have you know you just need more and more and more of them and as you expand the sky base you need to add even more thrusters which is just a really pain in the butt you can see this sky base here has absolutely no thrusters on it and then the second thing of course was you couldn't really control the height you could blueprint edit sensors to be up to 255 blocks in range but other than that you either were 255 blocks above the ground or 255 blocks below the ceiling and that was pretty much it you couldn't be like I want to be exactly 1,000 blocks in the air the game was like I don't know how you how you want me to figure that out you can't really sense that and so without any sort of scripted mods there wasn't really any easy way to make an adjustable sky base that uh, that had all this other thing and then the second problem with the sky base that I had which is you know why we've never done it until this point was the fact that let's say you have this sky base way up at the top the only way to really get to it is to fly up there and I mean I don't want to have to aim to fly to the sky base that requires effort you know you might accidentally hit the sky base when you're flying towards it knock it off course you might do all sorts of weird other things you might destabilize it so it's just a lot easier to have you know an elevator type system that lets you get back up to the sky base no problem and of course you know the elevator has to be able to track the sky base because what if your sky base moves a little bit right so with two mods we were able to make this happen and I'm really really excited to show it to you guys it took a little bit for me to figure out how to do this but I think it's awesome because this is sort of the starting platform for anyone who wants to build their own sky base to make this happen I had to use a anti-gravity mod from mini's mod pack and that allows us to actually basically use these gravity blocks to control the height and we'll take a look at how this sort of circuit panel works but uh, this whole circuit panel here controls the entire height of the of the sky base and lets you set how high you want it to go and it'll automatically adjust itself between that so that's kind of nice and then of course we use the intelligentia mod uh, mainly so we can have a player imitator there and of course so our automatic elevator here can track our sky base and automatically make its way back into this location here so we use those two mods really simply. It's really quite easy how it works. So the Intelligentia mod here is a really simple demo. Of course, we've got a little AI block there, which um, I don't I don't think it's following us. You know what? We can pull out the console. A lot of people are always asking, you know, how do you add yourself to the exceptions so that the AI block doesn't track you? Really simply, you type console. Uh, you know, hopefully you type it in one attempt and not five like I just did there. But you type console and then you can see as we press E, it'll say the tracker is now detecting you, the tracker is now ignoring you. So you want it to say ignoring you. If it is ignoring you, then that means it is, you know, it won't track you, it won't aim at you and your turret will only aim at something else. You can do the same with the distance sensors, uh, with, the, with the proximity sensors, I guess they're called that sense you know players within a certain location you go up to them it'll show up the same thing in the console same kind of message so that's basically how you can avoid uh your own creations tracking you but really simply here's a demo so we've got you can see wa it's actually tracking the sky base right now but uh it'll track the closest player indicator so you can see if we turn on for example the one in the back there s and d come on which shows that it's tracking there the arrow kind of goes in a weird direction it doesn't really it's not really intuitive to me. This just sort of gives us an example of how we can track the position because basically the elevator is always below the the, uh, the sort of sky platform, I guess you want to call it. And as it goes up, we need it to basically shift itself into position to always line up with the platform. Then, of course, the only other thing I wanted to show was just, you know, a couple of mini blocks. So for minis mod, we use the stabilizer block here and we use the, the gravity block. Uh, we use a few different gravity blocks. One is set to zero gravity, which makes you fall just ever so slightly. One is set to, I believe, 0.2, which is gravity to come down. And one is set to, I believe, negative 0.5, which is gravity to go up. But the demo I really wanted to show is, you know, if we have a creation like this, for example, uh, we can turn on the stabilizer block. It is set to weak vehicle stabilization, so the platform can kind of list slightly sometimes. It will adjust itself. But uh, the strong stabilization, of course, is what causes stuff to sometimes fly out of the map. So I decided weak stabilization. That way, if you accidentally bump into the platform or something, you're not going to ruin it. If we turn on a negative gravity block, we will go up. And this is really the principle on how it works. But the point of this little demo here was not to show that, you know, the anti-gravity block works, which it does, but really just how it interacts with weight. So you can see if we disconnect this weight here, which is now a free-floating mass, 
the anti-gravity block, it'll still lift the platform, but you can see it can't lift the weight itself. So that's kind of important to know if you're using this sort of sky base to build stuff. Because it uses the anti-gravity, you have to make sure all the creations you put on it also have a gravity block and you set them to have a zero gravity point. So it's really simple. We just take, you know, a gravity block here. We put a switch, attach the switch to it, and uh, we just go to our console again. And we just keep pressing E until we see that gravity multiplier say zero. We can close the console. And now this block here has zero gravity, which means, uh, you know, if, if we hit it, um, it'll kind of drift away. Now, again, we do the same demo. Turn both those on. Nothing happens. Anti-gravity and the stabilizer. It can, I mean, it, it kind of lifts up the one side, but not really. You can see there. But uh, if we turn on this to zero gravity, then all of a sudden you can see it can does, do its job. And oh... Well, it'll come back down eventually. But you can see, it, again, having some stabilization issues. Of course, the weight of this platform compared to the weight of that block is not very big. I think that block is heavier than the platform, which makes the difference. So, again, if you're building your own sky base, you know, you might want to check it out. Now, of course, we've been droning on in this video, and we haven't actually really gone and done anything. So, before we look at the elevator, we'll take a look at this platform. The platform is really, really simple. The whole thing is controlled by this back piece, and we'll see when we get up there, but it's really cool. If you expand this platform, you don't need to add any more anti-gravity blocks. As long as you keep everything attached, it will all just keep expanding. But really simply, it uses the Intelligentium Mod Altitude Sensor. So, we've got an Altitude Sensor here and another one here and one of them senses your minimum altitude and one of them senses your maximum altitude so the minimum altitude being the altitude you want the thing to hover at and if it comes below that altitude it'll increase itself to go up above that altitude and the maximum altitude being the altitude that you want it to be at so that if it gets uh, above that altitude it actually enables gravity to bring itself back down and then over here, we've got just our stabilizer and gravity controls with a few indicators. So there are three Intelligentia blocks here, but those are actually just for show. They're not actually connected. They're just really to give you indicators. So the left arrow indicates neutral gravity. So this is the neutral gravity column. The up arrow indicates the up gravity column. And the down arrow indicates the down gravity column. And then, of course, this is the stabilizer column. And this just really allows us to, you know, see visually when we're moving up, when we're moving down. You can, of course, feel it. So really simply, the way Blue Flame set up the Intelligentia mod is that these altitude sensors are based on the binary positions of these colors in the top row. So one would be this first position, then two, then four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. Now, all we do is we can paint any one of these eight logic gates here to determine our starting height and then this second set of logic gates here these four determines the differential between our medium height and our max height so because we painted this one orange that means we're going to hover at 512 blocks above the sea level i guess if you want to call it the neutral terrain level and this purple one here uh this purple one yeah that one will be uh is it this one uh, yeah it is so that's what 128 blocks of differential which means it's kind of that's a huge you know let's put it to 64 which basically means so we can hover at a minimum height of 512 and a maximum height of 570 something so if it starts to drift up it'll it'll bring itself back down and then we just you know hit the green switch and uh, it takes a bit it does of course have a stabilizing block built in and it kind of bounces a little bit as we go up you can see you can still move around it is a little bit sketchy uh you know you kind of slide a little bit once we get up to height the bouncing will sort of it'll it'll stop for the most part it's okay so you can see both altitude sensors are activated, which means we're above the maximum height. So it's going to be bringing us back down, which it is. And that one stopped. It kind of bobs a little bit when it first gets to height because, of course, it's it's kind of overcompensating and then undercompensating. But eventually, it'll just sort of equalize itself here. Uh, it usually takes two or three bobs. There we go. Should be good here. So now we're on the neutral gravity point, you can see. And we pretty much stopped moving. So again, with that neutral gravity, we will very slowly fall back down to the ground but now we've got our, our lovely sky based platform and of course a lot of you're saying well cod you said it was expandable what do you mean by that well this thing is is held up with simply mini scripted blocks so it's using anti-gravity and it's using the script stabilizer so no matter how we add weight uh we can just you know continue to add weight and it'll automatically adjust for it we don't like this isn't going to fall over if you had thrusters this would never work but because we're using scripts as we add more weight, it'll just automatically use this weight to basically keep the same anti-gravity on it. It doesn't care what the weight is. And the stabilizer does the same thing. So you can see we've gone all the way out here and it still, it still doesn't make a difference on the platform. So again, epic starting platform if you want to make a huge sky base. And it pretty much lag free. I mean, there's only really 
one script, I guess, running on this, because there's only ever one gravity block active at a time, even though there's multiple ones on it. And I guess the stabilizer blocks, that hopefully that doesn't lag, but... You can see really, really cool stuff. So again, I will include this on the workshop. I encourage you to download it, check it out. And that way, of course, you can have your own sky base and just, you know, start from here. I know this looks kind of kind of ugly, but you know what? Just build out however you want, and uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Now, of course, you're probably wondering, well, what does this white switch do and why do you have this big open section? And that is, of course, to, you know, have the bay doors for the elevator. So we're just going to we're gonna jump out. We'll just leave this up here, and uh, we'll go delete some stuff. Perfect. The elevator, really simple stuff, very much like the other, uh, the block up there. It uses anti-gravity to go up, uses these thrusters to go left, right, and back. It kind of just strafes into position. It doesn't rotate or anything like that. And then, of course, the intelligentia block on the top. So we got to make sure first that we are on the exception list. It's now ignoring us. Fantastic. Otherwise, it will track you know, the players that are sitting in the seat. So make sure if you're using the elevator, everybody puts themselves on the exception list. And now it should only be tracking. Those are all off, correct? Yes, so it should only be tracking the player indicator up inside the elevator bay door there. Now we get in this seat here, which has two switches. Switch number two, of course, is to go down because uh, this thing always has neutral gravity, which is kind of cool. So if we we hit it, you can see we've got always got neutral gravity. It'll stabilize itself once it gets a little bit off the ground. But pretty simple stuff. And then, of course, so two goes down. This is not the right seat. Two goes down and one goes up. So we press one. You can see, and it actually kind of pulses up. That's intentional. It, it doesn't use a full anti-gravity all the time. I found if you had it set to negative gravity, like negative 0.5, I believe, all the time, it went up way too fast. So I set it to negative 0.5, but uh, it did a little bit of a pulsing interval, and uh, you can see we're a little bit close. There we go. But you can see the elevator kind of getting jammed up in here, trying to get to that player indicator block. So we can just jump out, and then, of course, we can hit this, uh, this bay door here, like so. And then we can get back in the elevator or in the there we go this I kind of need to work on that a little bit And then of course hit one and put this thing back to being neutral gravity So it'll just kind of float there But uh, we don't want to hit two because then this weight actually is you know weighted on the platform But if we leave it at neutral gravity, it'll just kind of float there and actually if we increase our height now Let's go up to let's go up to three by five twelve. There we go. We'll just uh, it's gonna take a while We'll hopefully bounce our way over here without falling. You can see the elevator, it does in fact come with the whole creation. So it's neutral gravity, it's zero. When the creation stops, this thing's going to float up to the ceiling. So that's why this is kind of contained in a little bit of a cage. Um, yeah, it's a little bit weird. But again, you can't have it without that anti-gravity block because there we go. So we've reached the top and this will just keep alternating back and forth. And uh, there are probably other ways to do this, but if we had no anti-gravity block, then this elevator would just be so heavy that the uh, the platform wouldn't even go up. So we're, we're 1,500 up now in the air. I don't... I don't know. Are we? We're we're still we're falling for sure. Yeah, we're we're above max height. So now it stabilizes itself. And again, occasionally once it gets below that point, below this altitude sensor, it'll just have to fire a burst and uh, and go back up. But really cool on the elevator. I mean, we can you know again, we can't go way off to the side of the map because you have to have enough height for the elevator to shift itself over under position before you know it gets to the top. But it's good enough that we can you know we can open up the bay door again, get back in here, and now we can press two and just drop back down. And it doesn't really matter if we land perfectly straight, if we kind of move it a little bit off center. Uh, again, it'll line itself back up. So let's just take the elevator and we'll move a little bit. You know, we'll hit the ground there. Yeah, perfect. And, you know, so this is probably, probably pretty straight down. So we'll just go, you know, over to here, maybe. And you're like, oh, you know, I was hanging out with my buddies and my sky base is there. And it's like, man, I don't, I don't know if this is lined up. It doesn't really matter. We just hit that one. You can see it'll start adjusting itself. And again, moving relatively slowly over into position to make sure it lines up. And uh, hopefully it'll line up dead straight here. We can see it's uh, it's adjusting itself. Oh, there we go. Looks like it's adjusted itself in the one direction. It's just kind of correcting itself this way now. All right, here we go. Coming back up. Again, 1500 height. Perfect. Look at that. So now we can just, uh, we can actually turn off one right away. Because it'll, it'll kind of float down slowly. Gives you a little bit of time. Uh, hopefully, oh god, we don't want to. This is the only situation. Normally, you wanna, you wanna fall through the roof. We almost just fell there. Can we? We should put a switch on the inside here. There we go. Got that switch. Perfect. But anyways, of course, let me know what you think of this build in the comments down below. I will upload the two pieces to the workshop as one sort of creation. Just disconnect that pipe piece between them and you know do what you want. Again, really simple stuff. This top row of colors indicates your height right here and then your height differential. I like keeping the height differential pretty big 
Um, I'll upload it with these settings that are on it right now, but I like keeping that height differential pretty big. I feel like if you go really, really tight on the height differential, like if you go to one block or two blocks or even like eight, it just kind of bounces up and down constantly because it's constantly trying to adjust. And of course, the height differential allows for that, you know, that neutral falling point. So we're still in neutral gravity. And eventually, once we fall below that height, which will take a bit, you, oh, it just did it there, I think. You can see how we're kind of bouncing now. It actually just pulsed us once with the up force. And so, again, increasing that differential kind of gives you more time on that. But let me know, of course, what you think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.